Hello everyone, Matthew Bodie here, back with yet another South African genealogy tutorial. Although today's tutorial won't exactly be South African specific, but it should just help the, well, what I hope it will do is help the genealogy community in general, just to show them another method of sourcing documents from the website FamilySearch. So let's dive right into it. So right here I have my great-grandfather's baptismal record and I, for all the records I've managed to find on Family Search, back in the day I used to just download the image and upload to my tree. I've since realized how wrong that is and I've had to go back um, into my tree and basically source every document from scratch which has been um, quite a quite a tiring effort if I had just done it in the beginning and um, got into good practice from the beginning I could have saved myself a lot of time so hopefully this will encourage those of you who aren't sourcing properly right now to do so in the future because it is extremely beneficial and you'll soon see why. So again this is my great grandfather's baptismal record and I want to go onto his profile here and add the information and source it. So. First, let me add the fact he was baptized on the 5th of September, 5th of September, 1915, in Voxburg, at the Voxburg Dutch Reformed Church. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download the image, which I've already done. And I'm going to go into the gallery and upload that to my tree because that is quite a good habit to get into as well. Downloading the image, uploading it online, it just adds another layer of security just in case you ever, if, if ever your, I don't know, hard drive or computer gets wiped, at least it's online. Um, so here I just uploaded it and selected it as a document. And now I'm going to add it to the fact here just to show that um. When I have an image attached to the fact, it just reminds me that I have that record, so I don't need to go looking for it again. Now, in order to get back to that image nice and easily in the future, I want to source it. So I'm going to go into the source area here, and I'm going to press, this is on Ancestry by the way, and I'm going to press Add Source. And I'm going to create a new source. And what what I do from Family Search is, whenever there's a particular record from a particular catalog, I will um, create a source for each catalog, and then I always select the repository as Family Search. You only ever need to create the the source for a catalog once, and you can use it multiple times, and you only ever need to create a repository once as well, and you can use that multiple times. So let's go into this record here and I'm going to press information and here is the title of the catalogue but I'm just going to open that into a new tab so I can nice and easily copy and paste the title of this catalogue into the Ancestry source area. So I'm pasting this into the title area and now I'm going to go scroll down and go create new repository going to select that and I'm going to name this repository familysearch.org and I'm going to save this repository. That repository is now permanently saved to this um, source title so I can go ahead and press save source and now whenever I save a, um, a link from this catalog on my family tree I never have to select the repository again that's the beauty of um, repositories and sources. You only ever have to create them once, as mentioned previously. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy the link, which is a very good habit to get into, and paste that in the web address area. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the film number. So another quick little hack on Family Search to get the film number. Select the information from the film slash digital note in information over here. Once again, if you want to get this, you just click um, 
whenever you're on an image on Family Search, all you need to do is click information. Then you'll get the hyperlink to the catalog where from where this um, image originates. So that catalog is already open here. We did that earlier on. So now I'm just going to highlight this here. And I'm going to paste that in. I did a command or command F for my Mac, but you can do control F on your PC. And then you have to just paste that note information. And now you'll see highlighted is the film with that title. So all I need to do here is go to the right and highlight that film number. Because I always, always source the film number. It's um it is basically the film from the LDS vault from where this um record was originally filmed when the film crews went through and did the entire collection so that's always a good thing to source as well so I'm going to copy that and in the details here I'm going to put film number paste that number there and then I'm also going to go image 967 967 of 1145 and then I'm going to select the facts in my family tree to which this record supports, which would be my great-grandfather's name, his gender, his birth date, and his baptismal date. So there you go. I have the source nicely attached to my family tree. I have the image. I can go ahead and attach that image to the source in the media area and in the citation details you'll see all that information which I just plugged in and now I can exit out of the record exit out of the catalog and whenever I go into my family tree and say I'll say I want to look for Cornelius's siblings where would the logical place be to go it would be to the same Boxburg Dutch Reformed Church collection. So all I have to do is just click on the little baptism fact, and then it'll take me, it'll drag me along to the, to the source which supports that fact. I click view, select the link, open it in a new tab, and it takes me right back to that exact image on Family Search, which is so handy. I cannot iterate enough how how um, beneficial I found saving the links to my family tree. In addition, you, I'll now show you why I saved the film number, which is another another benefit. Once you go into search here and you go to search the catalog, um, you can search by film number. So I just plug that into there and go search and the exact catalog from which this baptismal record originates will populate once I put the film number in. Alright, let's practice again with a few records, so hopefully you guys can um, maybe go along with me, not with not with the records I'm currently viewing, but hopefully with records um, that you're viewing and can add to your family tree. Alright, so let's go and add Cornelius's marriage to my great-grandmother, Elizabeth Sarah Coots. So I've got the marriage up here, and this comes from a catalogue which I have not saved to my tree yet. So I'm going to open this catalogue into a new tab, like I did before, with the first record. And I'm going to copy the catalogue information. I'm going to go to my great-grandfather's profile in my family tree, click Add Source, Create a New Source. I'm going to paste that as the title there. I'm going to select the repository as Family Search once again. And I'm going to go and find the film number from, from where this um, record came. And again, all I have to do is click into Information here, highlight the um, digital note, copy that, go Command or Control F on your computer, and paste that. And you'll have the film number right here. Um, two columns left from the camera icon is the original film number. So I'm going to copy that film number and paste that into the details. Sorry, I didn't copy that over properly. So what I do is I go film number 
and then I'll paste it and I'll go image and this is image 1809 of 3137 3137 alright and I'm gonna go ahead and copy that link paste that into the web address area I'm gonna click the facts which it supports it supports his birth date, his gender his name and his marriage date and I'm gonna click submit I'm going to go to my gallery here I already previously downloaded this image so I'm just going to add it to my tree to the document, press done and I'm going to attach that image to the marriage fact as well as to the catalogue from where that image came alright slightly different to um, baptismal and marriage records I'm going to show you how I source civil death notices otherwise known as death certificates so here is um, Cornelius's death certificate and I'm going to, well I've already downloaded this previously so I'm not going to download it but I'm going to show you how I source this which is slightly differently to the um, first two catalogues so the, the um, process to save the catalog is almost identical I'm going to go and open that in a new tab I'm going to copy this into the detail, or oh, first I'm going to, so I have to click create new source and then I'm going to have to paste that in the title I'm going to select family search as the repository and once again I'm going to paste the web link and I'm going to go ahead and find the film number So I'm just going to copy that and paste it here and put the image number as well. So it's image 547 of 3014. Okay, so that first those first few steps are identical, but with death civil death notices and some of the earlier death certificates out or not necessarily, some of the earlier marriage records and birth records, you'll see here there will be a, a registration district and an entry number. And I always find that information beneficial to include in the source citation as well. Because if for whatever reason you ever need to order an official copy from the Department of Home Affairs for whatever reason, be it um, immigration or just whatever, um, you it'll be a lot easier for the department to find the record if you have that entry number saved. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to enter the year in which he died, or so that is 1965. I'm going to go to the registration district, which is Brackpan. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter the entry number, which is entry number 5. Entry number um, 5. And then, just like before, I'm going to select the facts which it supports, which is his birth date, his gender, his name, and his death date. So I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. Once again, I will upload the death certificate to my tree. Done. I'm going to attach it to the death fact as well as to the source citation which supports that fact. And last but not least, I'll show you how I um, source estate files which, um, for references which were originally found on the National Archives website. Right, so. Here is the here is the um, reference to my great grandfather's estate file. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I had that link up before, but I just lost it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Go to my actual tree and click on the link. So I don't, I don't want to bore you and find it all over again. All right, so here is my um, great grandfather's estate death notice. Quite genealogically rich. Has his wife's name, all his children's name. There's my grandfather over there. And I'm going to source this on my family tree. So let's go ahead and go add source here. And just to keep it simple with the state files, I always just um, I always just go National Archives of South Africa as the title because that is technically where it, where this record came from. It came from the um, Transvaal Archive Repository to be um, more specific, but I feel like the National Archives of South Africa is just a bigger umbrella for all the archives, and it's easier to save estate files that way rather than creating multiple sources or multiple um, titles from the different catalogs on family search. So for estate files that's just my general rule. I save it to the National Archives of South Africa. I'm gonna select the repository as family search because that is 90% of the time where I locate these estate files on family search. And I'm gonna go over to the reference which I found on the National Archives website and I highlight the text from the reference I'll right click and copy it and then I'll paste that in other information in the source area and of course I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the web link and then I'm going to go and track down this film number as well so once again all you have to do to get the film number is click on information on whatever image you're on on family search anywhere in the website if you have an image open there'll be an information area and you right click on the hyperlink under catalog record which will open the catalog from which this image originates and all you need to do to find the film number quickly and easily is highlight the film and digital notes here and do a command or control F search paste it and then you'll find the film number right there so you highlight that film number copy it I'm going to go film whatever and then image 2202 it is of 3175 3175 so I have that film information right there the image number the reference information and the web address all excellent stuff and I'm going to go ahead and select the facts which this um, image supports which is his death date his birth date, his gender, his name, and where he got married. I'm going to click Submit. I'm going to upload the record. Try that again. Second time lucky and save it. So here it's in my gallery, always easily accessible, I can just open that in my media area, and here it is on Ancestry, nice, high quality. So I'm going to go back into facts, attach that image to the death fact, and then attach that image to the source as well. And if you ever want to see your source information, you just go to citation details here. And that'll show you um, what you've saved to that particular source. Anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. And I would once again encourage you to get into the habit of saving your documents properly and sourcing your tree properly um, from the beginning. It'll save you a lot of time in the future when you're scratching your head trying to find out where you found a record. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.